Ahoy! Today we're taking a look at Persephone's kit to find out in how many ways we can break her and how much one-shot potential she has. We're also looking at various other mechanics and item interactions just to generally figure out this new version of the god because a lot has changed. Let's get right into it. The first thing we got here is a little bit of an interesting bug. If I use my two, look where the damaging part lands and then look where the plants land. So you see they land over here. This has been pointed out to me, but this is just a jungle practice bug. So this will not happen in actual game as far as we know, uh, since there is no delay in jungle practice, but there is a little bit of delay in actual games. So that seems to make a difference in that regard, but it's funny anyways, because you can kind of place them around you. When it comes to sending out her flowers, they actually still do a cone bite. If you look closely here, there's a little bit of a cone targeter on the enemy once they get into the damaging radius, but it is so quick that I don't think there's any way to avoid it, even with an escape, because it seems to be pretty much instant. The bite can actually hit enemies multiple times. Look at this. The plant keeps biting Odin over and over, and he'll take more and more damage, so this means running away from the plants can be very, very dangerous now. This is even more dangerous when proccing multiple plants with your three, since all of the plants will actually keep biting the enemy. Check this out. This is a ton of very quick damage if an enemy runs away in a straight line, so you have to juke in one direction at least, at least walk off to the side. Aiming Persephone's one actually feels really familiar, since it's kind of like aiming her ultimate now. It'll just change direction until the very last second, so as long as you keep moving your camera, you will re-aim, which means you can trace enemies quite easily. As you can see here, the slow also feels quite significant. In my opinion, this slow is pretty important though, because the two has a pretty long wind-up. There's quite a lot of time for the enemy to get out of this area if they aren't slowed. If they're slowed beforehand, then obviously it's a lot easier to confirm it on them. Overall, I would say setting it up is very similar to setting up a Kronos 3-1 combo now. Her passive works just as before, and you can still stack up to 100 seeds. You can see me farming quite a lot of seeds here from the three stacks that I had. As you can see here, the plants do proc items like Ethereal Staff, which I think is quite important because you can easily apply this to enemies at range. Now I had a little bit of discussion about how strong the plants are or are not. Let me answer that one for you. I think that answers it quite well. I think we don't need further conversation beyond this point. Now, you may say that that's not a realistic scenario in a normal game, but let me show you this. Yeah, so, just add a Staff of Merlin into the mix and you can do that too. You obviously have to intentionally whiff your ultimate not to proc Obsidian Shard for the full damage, but I think she'll be alright. And for good measure, let's do it without Obsidian Shard as well. Still enough. No problem. We're fine. Generally speaking, as long as you're able to go in aggressive, you can deal a truckload of damage very, very quickly with a new kit, because you can basically just do this and you'll pretty much pop any squishy in your way. So I am actually a bit scared about her damage numbers. Now that we got the memory out of the way, let's look at some other mechanics. Something that I find a bit unfortunate is that flicking the camera after using your three to activate the plants from the two will not do anything. It'll fire exactly in the direction that you're facing. So if I aim at this Odin and I fire the ability, let's, let's fire it backwards and I turn my camera really quickly, it'll still go straight at the Odin because that's exactly where I was facing when the ability was placed down. So you'll always have the choice to either jump backwards or forward, obviously, but it has to be in a way where the enemy is already aimed at by the flowers. A difference from her previous kit is obviously that the flowers are more spread out and this is something you have to take into account when using her three so that you get into the range of the flowers while you're jumping forward or backward because otherwise you might end up not firing at one of the flowers and then it'll not proc and you just shoot two flowers. Spear of the Magus will probably be a core item for Persephone now. Let me demonstrate why. So this is the first instance here. You see the 446 and then 288. And now without Spear of the Magus. He is 446 again on the first hit, but then 268 since it doesn't have the Spear of the Magus proc because of the cooldown. This means if you're firing multiple plants 
This will always be factored in for every single plant that bites an enemy. So especially if you're firing three plants, every single bite after the initial one from the same plant and from other plants will all be amplified as long as you hit the target with the Spear of the Magus proc, as well as obviously your other abilities. So it's super easy for her to just get that one proc with any ability and then get a truckload more damage out of that. The plants are also a very strong tool for anti-heal, because it only takes one plant to apply Divine Ruin to the enemy, and considering you can just keep firing these from range very safely, there's a very easy way to apply anti-heal to a lot of enemies in a team, especially since the plants don't even stop and keep going through enemies. A really strange thing is what happens between the plants and Soul Gem. Look at this. I got a stack of Soul Gem here, if I fire one plant. But then, the next plant will not provide any stacks. And so on. But if I use an ability again, and I don't have to hit an enemy, I can just place it here, then it'll count as a new ability, and it'll be a new stack. But we're gonna use multiple abilities here, so let's check this out. So we send out the first one, get one Soul Gem stack as we would expect. These ones here will not provide any Soul Gem stacks. And then we're firing these two here, of which one is from another ability, and we'll still not get any stacks. So this is with a freshly bought Soul Gem. And if we fire this at the Odin here, then for some reason we get a second stack from the seed that we get returned. Trying this again after using an ability, we don't get a second stack for the seed returned. And that's after I sold the other seed. So I'm not sure how that works or if that's something to do with healing. But then I had full HP as well. So I don't know how you get the second stack sometimes. But either way, you can usually get quite a fair amount of stacks by just using your damaging abilities. And then in between, when there are any plants, uh, fire them off, basically. I think I can even fire off this one now. Uh, yeah, it will still stack. And even if I use the three here, that should stack again. It'll not give you an extra stack with a plant sometimes. But generally speaking, you will be able to get a lot of stacks, but not a completely ridiculous amount uh, by using the combo of your abilities and uh, just, just switching it up, essentially. As long as you sw keep switching it up, you will get some stacks. So here's an interesting one. I have fully stacked Soul Gem now. And now look at my health. When I use my three, which will technically end up damaging the enemy, but the initial circle will not damage anyone. You can see that the Soul Gem proc disappears, but I don't actually get health. So in some circumstances, you can actually end up losing the Soul Gem effect because you're not hitting an enemy with a damaging part of your ability and the plants were already placed. And even though they deal damage afterwards, that's apparently not enough to proc the heal at that point. So some janky interactions that I think need fixing in some way, but overall I would still say Soul Gem is very strong because there's so many ways in which you can proc it very frequently. Just to demonstrate that once again for good measure here. Look at the health. Soul Gem stuck is gone and nothing happens. So this is something that can definitely be recreated as well. And equally, she can use Soul Reaver very, very well because it'll also proc on all these plants she sends off. But in the same sense, if you put down multiple sets of plants and you don't do anything in between, it'll also result in the same thing where we get one Soul Reaver proc here but then if we send off flowers after that, they will not proc Soul Reaver. In this case, however, there is no issue with proccing the three through that. It'll still proc one instance of Soul Reaver. The plants actually apply Gem of Isolation as well, which is an interesting one, because it means that they have a relatively reliable way of slowing enemies down with the relatively short duration of the effect now. When it comes to the stuff of Murden, there's something else that's interesting. We put down two sets of plants here, then obviously the first one would deal less damage with the initial ability. But let's have a look at the plants themselves. Starting with 200 damage here on this one set of plants, and we're starting with 200 on the other. All of these plants will deal full damage and not be affected by the reduction that takes place to stuff of Murden. That only affects the initial part of the ability. Just to very quickly demonstrate that as well, just to make sure you know. This is where the damage is reduced, and this is where the damage is normal. So that part is affected. Fortunately, for anyone who wants to experiment with crazy builds, Persephone's normal abilities will obviously affect Sacrificial Shroud, but sending out her plants will not. So you don't actually take any extra damage for sending out the plants, even though they count as abilities in a different way. 
Now, something that doesn't stack all too well on Persephone now, which is a bit unfortunate, is Gem of Focus. Obviously, using an ability will stack it, but the plants don't stack it because they don't use mana. That's the condition for stacking Gem of Focus. So overall, you will end up only being able to stack it with the three normal abilities. I don't think that makes Gem of Focus a bad start or anything, but I think she is better off looking into Sands of Time especially. Archmage's gem is super inconsistent in how and when it procs. For now, I'm gonna send off these flowers and it'll not proc. So that's what you would expect if you are using an ability. And if we put down an ability in order to have that reset that she has and send off a flower, then it procs sometimes. But then under other circumstances it will also not proc, and I don't know what exactly determines this. It seems that there's some state where it can get stuck, where it definitely doesn't proc from the plants anymore. I would say overall it seems to be relatively effective in procking it on an enemy, but again, it's a bit inconsistent. Something important about leveling order is that the new two cannot hit the full wave. On the other hand, with the new two it's much easier to put down plants early in the game and have them set up in lane before and because you're placing three at once. So that is a trade-off. Technically there is an alternative though if you want to start with your one, it is just very, very annoying. To something that Full Games X suggested on Twitter, what you can do, assuming the enemy doesn't go up to their tower right away, which in this bot game will unfortunately happen, but technically if they weren't here yet, you could just run into the tower and you could suicide to that tower and then you'd have a very brief time frame to just very quickly put down the plants in middle lane and then you'd respawn in base and you can go from there. It's super annoying to do, but technically possible, and then you'd have your plants in mid lane right away, but they're kind of to the enemy side anyways, and you don't have much time to place them. Now, when it comes to ultimate, there isn't really much that hasn't been said through the ability itself. If you hit multiple enemies, it'll still just proc one soul gem stack, it'll still put the vines on them, but now different from the before, the vines are simply a slow when walking away from the radius. We can demonstrate that on this Odin here as well. Obviously three health points if you hit it on the wall, five on anything else. So nothing really inherently changed there. So here you can see now Odin's gonna try and walk away and he's gonna get slowed and here is where he gets stuck. So yeah, just very straightforward. Basically the same ability just with some minor adjustments. And last but not least, I know you wanna know if it's possible to one shot a guard with a single two with just the three plans from that. And the answer is yes, if you put every last buff on yourself, then you can absolutely do that as well. Probably not what you're going to see in most games, but still a fun thing to try out. Now, if you enjoyed watching me breaking things and you want to see more of that, click like and subscribe or I will go to my garage, hide in the corner, stare at my home 